This is meant to be Gavin Buckley on the Maryland Crabs saying this is the best solution to a hangover listening to these guys talk. <laughs> I feel better already. Live from a grungy kitchen table located in Annapolis, Maryland's scenic and historic capital, it's the Maryland Crabs Podcast. With each episode, your hosts, Tim Hamilton, John Frenet, and the occasional guest will dive in and pick apart the stuff that really matters most to you. We're too lazy to actually solve any of these problems, but we can definitely stir the pot. From schools, politics, parking in the fire lane, to those horrible people who drive BMWs. And here with this week's episode, live from the kitchen table, Tim Hamilton and John Frenet. It's the Maryland Crabs. Let's talk boats. It is the Maryland Crabs, and we are going to talk about boats. We are going to talk about to Paul Jacobs, who is the general manager for the Annapolis Boat Shows, which are coming into town this weekend and next weekend. Learn all about what's new and cool and exciting there. Did they get um, rained out last year? Not rained out, but did it get rained on? Oh, it gets rained on all the time. They got flooded and rained. And, and actually, that's something we talk about because they've got a solution to the flooding downtown, but they're not going to give it to the city. <laughs> Giant dam? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. A levy? Yeah. Our um, discussion last week with Gavin and Alex was interesting. I that mean, should have been a drinking one. We all had these glasses of water. You hear the clinks well, the of the go ice cubes in the for background. Uganda but... or something like that. He couldn't go there drunk. Well, I mean, well, we, we could be gentlemen about it and just sip our slow gin fizzes or something. <laughs> or something about that. But, you know, it, it's there's, there's a method to his madness, it seems, but it's... Uh, it just wasn't very well communicated. I think that's that's what I took out of I get it. Anyway. To, yeah, I get torn about the bike lane is that it's a knee-jerk reaction when it comes to this, the city, especially on social media, that I just get irritated in principle that whenever any change occurs, everyone's up in arms. And I'm not saying that people don't have valid points. Maybe I just fall on the side of the bike lane just because I'm annoyed by everyone's whining. And I'm not saying that there aren't some some real issues with it. And I think that they have to address them. I think it, he moved faster than people are accustomed to. And aesthetically, and like I said, I don't like it. But they can clean that up. Well, they are. They are. I mean, we live in a culture of no, which is unfortunate. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to you know, be critical of the mayor and say that he should have known that. And I think, you know, a little bit more of communication and not make the assumption that all the businesses knew about it because of this one meeting that they had. I think that was a, a downfalling on his part. But I think that... uh you know, to turn around and say, hey, look, this is what we're going to do. It is only temporary. It's only 30 days. This is what we're going to do for your customers as far as appeasing their parking woes. Here's the tickets or whatever it is to get into the garages, whatever they did. I think that would have gone a long way. I don't know that it would have made any difference as to whether the thing was ultimately accepted or rejected, but I think it would have gone a long way to prevent the uh, protest rallies at the top of Main Street and uh, which was stupid and everything else that was there but but if you haven't listened to that give that a listen last week's episode was really good we had Alex Plein who is the former chairman of the transportation board he's now on the planning and zoning commission and uh, that guy from Australia came in and, and talked to us and explained. Paul Hogan yeah <laughs> So, no, we had uh, Gavin Buckley, the mayor of Annapolis, in with us. So that that was an interesting episode and certainly timely with all of the brouhaha for the uh, bike lane. I think that's but, the exact words that Alex used in his commentary on Ion Annapolis, brouhaha. Brouhaha. I meant to make fun of him about it and I forgot. So now you have to text him. That That is true. Hey, and to anybody who's listening here, thank you guys, man. Our traffic on this podcast is like through the roof. Yeah, it's pretty good. Pretty and, happy. I mean... The Red Maryland episode was great. Yep. The one with Richard Karn, Al Borland from uh, Home Improvement yep. was really good. And a whole bunch of the most recent ones really have been through the roof traffic-wise. So that means more people are listening to us, which is kind of cool. So uh, maybe you can give your mom a night off or something like that. And, yeah, so she won't have to click all those likes and everything and download <laughs> on all her different devices. She's got that carpal tunnel and all that <laughs> stuff. But but no, thank you. But do please recommend us to all of your friends and coworkers and colleagues and whatnot, because that does help. Pass the word if you like us. And, um, you know, thank you. If you're ever on any place where you get your podcast, make sure you give us a review or a rating if you've got the time to leave a few words. They are always good because we can learn from that. And definitely subscribe. And we say this all the time and maybe people don't understand what that is. So when you subscribe, you go, you find your podcast. You just don't listen to that particular episode. You click subscribe and it's delivered to your device every week. You don't have to think about anything. It's just right there. There we are. Marilyn Crab staring at you. That's right. Yesterday, I was walking my track at Pitt Moyer, and I looked down at my phone, and it said, the Annapolis Podcast has a new episode. Do you want to listen to now? I got that Libby app. I learned about that when you- What app? Libby. Oh, yeah. L-I-W-B-Y. I learned about that when you did your 
your interview with a library with um, mm-hmm. what was his name? Skip Alt. Skip Alt. And so I downloaded the Libby app, so now I download books from the library, audiobooks. And I will say sometimes there's a little bit of a wait. So I, I reserved this book probably six weeks ago, but it was A Stand by Stephen King, which by the way is 55 hours long to listen to it. But I, I, I love that app. I listen to stuff all the time. I, I listened to Salt last week, all about Salt. Look at that. And if you didn't listen to that episode, you don't know anything about the Libby app. I was impressed with that episode. I would always go say that John did that on his own with Skip Alt from the Anne Arundel County Library. And I was so annoyed with him because I thought it was going to be just so dull. And it really was really good because I learned all this stuff I didn't know the library had. But yeah, do um, but yeah, no, like I say, I got my Annapolis podcast, which was Scott McMullen's. His latest one was a uh, actually a very, very powerful one with uh, Jesse Dunleavy and her son. She lost him to an overdose. Oh, I didn't hear that one. And um, he, he really got into it. It was really good. Oh, so awesome. I do recommend go looking at that. But before you do that, Hang tight here because we have Paul Jacobs from the Annapolis Boat Shows, and he's coming up right after we pay some bills, I think. Here's to the teacher who spends her weekend helping children who need a little extra attention. To the soldier who missed the birth of his baby while serving overseas. To the EMT working full time and taking night classes. To the police officers and firefighters working long hours away from their families to keep our families safe. Here's to you, our hometown heroes. I'm Alan Hyatt, chairman and president of Severn Bank, and we know there are many heroes among us. Men and women who serve without expecting anything in return which is why we're honored to offer our Hometown Heroes program to educators, law enforcement officers, firefighters, first responders, healthcare workers, and military personnel. Whether you're opening a checking account or buying a new home, we're here to give back to you. Learn more about our Hometown Heroes program at SeverinBank.com. Severn Bank, here with you. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. When you think of Watermark, you probably think of Harbor Queen. You know, the big white boat that sits down at the end of City Dock. But did you know that Harbor Queen is much more than just a visitor attraction? That thousands of local school children take field trips aboard it every year to learn about the Chesapeake Bay and our region's history. But that's not all you don't know about Watermark. When the Susquehanna River crested, washing thousands of tons of debris into our waterways, Watermark was there, rolling up their sleeves, helping the Annapolis Harbor Master clean up Ego Alley. And when the Annapolis Police Department SWAT team needed a boat to conduct special training exercises on to help protect our waters, they called Watermark. Watermark, making our mark. To learn more about how Watermark is here for our hometown, visit watermarkjourney.com. Is it safe to say that I'm the first person that has joined an interview in this location? This You are the very first. That's correct. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is John Frenet. I'm here with Paul Jacobs, who is the owner, general manager, chief cook and bottle washer of the boat shows that are coming up in Annapolis before we will know it. And we're sitting in his new, I wouldn't say it's a corner office, but it's probably got the best view of Annapolis. I am looking out a big window onto Ego Alley with the state capitol just behind us, the market house, uh, Main Street's going up to my left. Congratulations on moving into 110 Compromise Street. (laughs) Thank you. It's uh, actually good to finally be here. A bit of a distraction looking out this window, by the way, watching boats and people and all that. But it's, uh, we're, we're getting we're getting used to it. It's. Uh, I mean, you guys have moved in 110 Compromise Street is the old Fawcett's building, which uh, it probably will never shake that moniker. Right. It's like CBS. Some people still call it the Mexican Cafe. <laughs> but you're one of the ten- maritime tenants that's moved into here. And this just made so much sense for the boat shows because your business for the weeks that you're operating as a boat show is right here. Right. Um, so it, it makes sense that you can watch it evolve, we'll handle the issues. You don't have to have trailers back on PG Street. PG? I know, I know those Prince, Prince or King. I, Prince, I, I get all Prince. this. <laughs> it's the small um, one to Prince, I guess. You know, all, 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 all of the streets there. And yes. it really just sort of, I'm sure, helps your operations immensely. Well, yeah. If you think about just the move between our previous office and the, and the trailers and do it two ti- three times a year. Actually, we do it in the fall. We do it twice in the spring. So it, it's, it's a bit disruptive to everything thing where we can be a permanent location here now people will get to know that this is the place you go to uh, check in for the for the boat show and uh, and we can watch what's going on all the time year round too do you have a spot on the roof for your uh, time-lapse camera yet 
uh, we have access to a spot on the roof. We don't have it. We don't have that put together yet. No. <laughs> Those are, I always I always love to watch the changeovers and the videos that come out of that, where the sailboats come in in a ballet and they go out in a ballet, and then the power boats come in. But um, let's talk about the let's talk about the boat shows because while I would like to think it's August and the boat shows will be here before we know it, the sailboat show comes in as it always does, October fourth through the eighth, and then the power boat show follows up the following weekend on October eleventh through the 14th right and this is what year is this for that this is number sailboat show number 49 so uh the first actually the first in-water boat show ever produced anywhere was in 1970 here in annapolis and uh so this is the 49th with ne- next year being our 50th celebration oh that's gonna be a big one you have to have fireworks we'll have something very. I, I, i've heard that you to have to have fireworks for 50 they did that at the seafood festival last year for their 50th okay um you got to catch up with them you got <laughs> and the power boat show's been here what about 20 two years less so it's, this will be the uh this will be the 47th year for oh the, wow for the i didn't realize it yeah they, they, they started the uh the power boat sh- sailboat show first and then two years later they added the, the uh, power boat show immediately following that's just sort of how the mentality works here in annapolis sailboats first and power boats I, I think that's true now if you look at the size of the two shows that may be a little different these days <laughs> but uh, but yes that's the mentality is right that that is true well i'll tell you the sailboat show and the power boat show have become two icons and we talked a little bit before we started and it's in the maritime community when you say annapolis that's what you think about in the general community when you say annapolis two things that probably come to people's mind will be the naval academy and that comes to pretty much everybody's mind i think so and anybody that's in even a cursory knowledge of maritime or boating would think about a boat show Uh, as as you said they're not going to remember that washington resigned his resignation (laughs) here (laughs) that we were the capital of the u.s or uh who our mayor is for or that we're even the capital of maryland because we all know that it's baltimore uh, really? You know, that's what, that's See, what I didn't says. know that. I thought it was, I thought I'm pretty sure it's Annapolis. <laughs> yeah, Baltimore thinks they are. Yeah, we'll give them, give them yeah. a little bit there. But the boat shows are just part of the culture, part of the fabric of what Annapolis is. And obviously, there's some, some locals that bemoan the traffic and bemoan the people and everything else. But the more you expose the city to more people, and your attendance has been on the increase. You went through a, a dip during the recession, sure. which is sure. uh, not unusual for 100% very, of the businesses. Very common. Yes. <laughs> but your attendance has been up. You had a record attendance last year. The economy is very strong. I know my 401k has been going up and stocks have been appreciating. So sure. I would presume that this year would be also a, another strong year. But each time we can expose Annapolis to one more person, and whether that be through the boat show, which is certainly you know a huge number of people, but they're seeing the market house and Iron Rooster and Middleton's and Dock Street and Ego, Ego Alley and you know, all of the restaurants, all of our merchants and everything that we have to offer, the State House, East Port all the great places over in Eastport. And that's a huge value to the city and to the residents here. Well, it has to be. And I think that uh, the studies that have been done show that there's a $112 plus million dollar economic impact that's created in, by the boat shows in two weeks in October. I'm not talking about the 4th of July. I'm talking about two weeks in October. So it's it's huge from an economic perspective, uh, exposing the city of Annapolis to the world. We, we have people here from all 50 states and 27 foreign countries uh, that, just that we know about. Obviously, the, the strongest group still comes from Maryland and, and um, Pennsylvania and Virginia and, then, and Mid-Atlantic, but they come from all over the country, all over the world here. All the hotels sell out. Uh, there are cottage industries that have been developed for, for uh, commissioning week and, and boat show weeks. And uh, I mean, they you know, people sure. leave town and rent their houses out. A- ab- absolutely, the whole Airbnb industry. Sure. That's uh, people that are doing that. So it's it's huge, and not everybody enjoys the benefit that week. But there's that ripple effect. There's that that uh, uh, multiplier effect that happens throughout the year, where the people make their money during these two weeks, and then they spend it throughout the the community mm-hmm. the rest of the year. I've also got to imagine that a lot of people that do come here specifically for the boat show are sitting here saying, "Well, you know, we ought to go back there again for absolutely not the boat show." Uh, you sure. know, we're hustling. We're looking at sure. what we need to do for the boat. But let's 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 stroll these streets. Let's see what what the city has to offer, sure. um, which is good. And you, and you had mentioned the cottage industry of, you know, I mean, you, you donate money. I don't say donate, but I mean, give money to the city every single year. <laughs> uh, they get a, a portion of your ticket sales. There's, you know, the fees and the and everything else that goes along with that. You reimburse for the uh, I believe, like the police over so, so the city and, services sure. and services and whatnot. And um, you pay rent. We pay rent to lots of people. 
Yeah. Uh, and yeah, and you know, it's not just a donation. Of course, it's rental of a space, and and uh, the city and state of Maryland uh, actually had the, had the greatest share of our ticket sales revenue. So we we get less than than the rest of them do. But that's that's how we develop. That's how we determine. Well, that's that your problem rent. for coming to Maryland. I mean, that's how that <laughs> that's how that works. That's how that works here. I have nothing negative to say about Maryland, of course. <laughs> um, no, but so it, it's it's been that's the way it's been developed from the very beginning. Is that, that there's a sharing of the ticket revenue. So everybody's everybody. Everybody needs to be involved in, in developing the the consumer groups that come in here and, and uh, driving attendance and that kind of thing. It's not just a, it's not just us that do it. So the city helps out. The visit Annapolis people help out. It's a it's a big deal. Well, it is, and, and also the timing of this thing in October. Our tourists have left. Uh, the parents have left from the Naval Academy and, and Plebe Summer and Parents Weekend. The Naval Academy is getting back into the routine of school. Obviously, we've got a couple of football games that come in here. Sure, but. We're going into a really difficult time for every single one of the retailers that I'm looking at going up Main Street. We're going into the winter months, which are hard. And I've spoken with a restaurateur who said that, you know, you get me in the right month in February or the right night on February and I'll pay you to eat in my restaurant and I'll even buy your drinks if you eat in the window and smile. Can you tell me which one that um, is? I, I'm yeah, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you. I'll tell you later. But um, and but but again, you know, here here it is. October. We're bringing the business into town, and the restaurants are full. The hotels are full. People are shopping. People are buying. Not just at the boat show, but they're going up Main Street. They're going up to Maryland Avenue. Uh, probably out to West Annapolis, over into Eastport. Certainly, we're making the um, the budgets of the PTAs at Annapolis Elementary School, who offer their parking lots for parking, sure. and Eastport Elementary, which has done parking forever. And you've got people that are doing private. A parking lot and or you know if they've got a front yard and everything else but this is a huge boost to all of the merchants throughout the year that will carry them through and there's there's three events i mean you've got midnight madnesses which tend to boost merchants in december uh and then in january or um restaurant week sure uh, that tend to really sort of be this little jump start to make them through until the spring rolls around and the academy starts ramping up to commissioning week the spring sailboat show comes into right. annapolis right. and um and then we get into summer it's just a cyclical thing and it's it's just a wonderful little kickstart to what can potentially be a tough, very tough time for businesses. Well, I'd certainly like to think that we uh, that we make a contribution from that standpoint. I mean, you're bringing eighty to a hundred thousand people in here for uh, two weekends in October. I I, I I know that they're spending money. What I, was that number that you said again? Eighty to a hundred thousand people coming in for two weekend two weekends in October. Some of them stay throughout the rest. Of the rest of the time. We have we have exhibitors. We have six hundred people a day that work in the or I mean right. six thousand people. People a day that work in the boat show. If you've got 500 exhibitors and each one has has uh, you know X number of people, if we do the math, we know that there are a lot of people that come in here and spend the the two weeks here and and, and uh, do the work. And then we've got this whole large gigantic consumer group that comes from around the world to 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 come in too. So th- the point is, um, these people are spending money somewhere. I don't know that they're going up and buying a diamond ring from so and so or doing a, but somebody as a result of those weeks has made a lot of money and will be buying that diamond ring. Yeah, no, the exposure exposure is critical. And I mean, and that, that's a huge number, that um, 80 to 100,000. I mean, if you divide that evenly between the two shows, that's uh, doubling the population of the city almost <laughs> on each weekend. You're that's a fun in, fact. <laughs> bring, in, bring in an additional, I think I want to play that in trivia this yeah, week. Yeah, really. <laughs> um, but it's, uh, again, these are people that didn't have Annapolis on their radar in October without the boat show. Well, you know, it's interestingly enough, we say that and we bring new people in and we're working hard to, to bring in the millennials and younger you know a whole new audience um, boating is not something that, that's uh, growing in, in large numbers in terms of um, bringing new people in so we're working hard to, to do that we're creating entertainment and other kinds of activities just not just boats not just boat shoes that sort of thing um, a lot of these people we have about a 70 percent retention rate these people are coming back year after year after year so okay. they come in from around the mid mid-atlantic area or wherever they come from and come to this boat show because they love this boat show and they love Annapolis. This is sort of like the Sam's Club of boating. It's just this big giant warehouse. I mean, there's anything you want in boating. It's under one big roof at one time, and certainly it's a benefit for local boaters here as well as sure. anybody that wants to come in. I mean, uh, I can buy a you know, 50, 60, 70, 80 foot yacht, um, or I can buy you know, 12 foot of line, and uh, and, and I, I can get it all here. Um, to attract the millennials, attract the younger crowd and the new generation, uh, there's entertainment and whatnot. What's What type of entertainment have you well, we have um, the, the, the kinds of things that we're doing are, are, number one, educational. We've really 
we've really put a focus on uh, on boating education and, and introducing people to the sport and or lifestyle and that's of boating. C- Cruisers University. Uh, more importantly, would be something like the first sale workshops. We have virtually 300 people that get on on uh, 22-foot Catalinas this year and or Benetos this year uh, to, to take a, an hour and a half sail. So we give them a 45-minute class and an hour, 90 minutes of sailing out on, uh, with instructors out on, the, out on the water. For many of them, it's the first time they've ever been on a sailboat. And we sell that out two times a year. We have 500 people that we're introducing to the sport or lifestyle of sailing each year. We have Take the Wheel. Take the Wheel has nine, uh, eight different boats, four monohulls and four multi-hulls, and people sign up for a full day of classes and uh, sea trials on those boats. And so they go out to get to go out and try boats that are as large as 54 feet and larger. So are, uh, these, are these people that are interested in that particular type of a boat, or are these particular people that are looking for to getting into boating, or both? Both. A lot of it, the the first sale workshop people are looking at getting into boating. They're they're trying boating out for the sailing out for the first time. Right. Uh, we have a program now in the Power Boat Show this year, and it's done by the uh, Boat US Foundation, and they will take people out for um, instructional instructional sessions on, on power boats too, small power boats. Uh, uh, I think Freedom Boat Club is, is providing the boats for them. So we've we've found that that seems to be the best way to to, to bring new people in and and to educate them and to get them excited about the the sport and or lifestyle of boating. Throw them uh, in the water. Throw them <laughs> what? on the water. Let's say on the water, <laughs> not in the water. So we have first sale workshops. We have a whole uh, group of classes called the American Sailing Summit uh, with uh, the the big magazines that are providing. Um, for fee programs. We have free seminars. We have Take the Wheel, and we have Cruises University that's now in about its seventh year, and we'll see almost um, almost 400 people a year attending, registering for and attending classes in Cruises University. So, last fall, in the Sailboat Show and Powerboat Show, we had 900 people who paid fees to go to various programs that were all about boating and or sailing and or cruising or whatever. Now, Cruises University, that's sort of a soup to nuts how to boat, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's all about living aboard a boat, actually. These are people who are looking at, at sailing away or boating away, going away on a, on a boat and spending time living on a boat. So um, we talk about near or distant shores. I came here on a boat. Uh, that's how we found it. That's how the mayor got here. Yeah, yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's how many of us get here. And uh, the people that come and work for us every fall, a lot of them are coming here on boats because they're, they're long-range, long-term cruisers. So uh, this is these are classes that are all about anything from navigation and diesel maintenance to uh, how you prepare food in the galley and your storage systems and um, weather forecasting. And, and we have a program called uh, Cruising Women. We have two wonderful, strong women who will teach this class, and we have, I think, 27 or 28 people registered right now for that one, women. And uh, that's empowering women to get out there and be an important part of the crew as well. Don't need no stupid man to sail. You don't need, but <laughs> and, and in many cases, it's the man out taking a diesel or, ma- or navigation class, and she's taking this class, and then they st- spend two more days taking electives. and so they, can buy, they combine their skills and, and they have set a sail. They have, a, they have a, a crew, a team, and, and the, you have the captain, of course, and then you have the admiral. And right. she's she's uh, doing something. She's, she's, she's the admiral. Yeah. This is, let's not make any – don't don't pick right. any bones exactly. on that one. That's uh, what, So what's new about the sailboat and the powerboat show this year? What are you um, – as far as the boats come? I mean, I know every year you premiere some new boats. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. And obviously this is one of the big shows where manufacturers will introduce new and re- – I don't say refurbished, but new freshened up models. Right. You know, there's some that are just stalwarts that have been around forever. Probably that J boat that got – Hit on the on the bay a couple weeks weeks ago. It's being refurbished now, probably. That was, uh, <laughs> but I'll tell you, but that boat. I can't believe how well that held up. Uh, they should be advertising that. Like remember when Boston Whaler used to cut their boats cut in half? half? Right. <laughs> I, do, I do remember that. Yeah, that was uh, that was a, a it was a combination of uh, of errors that that uh, leads to things like that. We, we know that, but uh, there are always. Innovations. There are always new technologies. It's whether, whether it be in uh, in the electronics area or whether it be the boats themselves and in, in the, the platform. Uh, foiling catamarans now. We've got a few. We've got a couple of those. We have huge numbers of catamarans. Um, catamarans have become um, have become the, the giant in the industry right now, particularly in the um, in the charter 
business. Okay. They're stable. They're fast. They're roomy. They're, lots of people can can sail on these boats and they don't spill their drinks because they sail flat. You know, so it's a huge direction in, in the boating industry right now with with catamarans and, and trimarans too. So multi hulls. So we've got those. We've got um, small boats on land. We've got uh, uh, there's another boat that's been innovated and uh, invented here in Annapolis. that's coming this year. It's a small boat. You'll have to go out and look at it. Okay. So there, there are just lots of things that that are presented and introduced at the boat show, whether it be gear or whether it be clothing or accessories, lifestyle items. Um, but mostly it's about the boats, and they are new. New in both sail and power this year. Power Boat Show is introducing a lot of uh, a lot of new uh, boat introductions. Now, now the person that comes to one of the sailboat shows, are they looking to figuratively sail away with a boat that day or that weekend for this, or are they looking for next season or? In the, in the fall shows, uh, it's not practical to be thinking that you're going to have a boat that's available to, to drive away on Tuesday. Most people, most of these companies are, that are here are manufacturers in the sail, sailboat show. Most are the manufacturers. You're coming in to place your orders. They'll, they'll be they'll be produced over the winter time and delivered in the spring or or maybe a year from spring depending on, on what happens the power boat industry pretty much the same although not quite as as strict as that many times uh, we, we will have over 650 boats this year in the in the wow. power boat show it's it's huge and many of those boats are smaller boats either on land or in the water where they literally are available for immediate sale and you could you can put your name on that one and, and pick it up on Tuesday after the boat show so it, it depends um, uh, in, in the sailboat show, we've got a lot of gear, a lot of equipment, a lot of accessories. People are coming here to update, upgrade their current boats. Power boat show, they come in, they, they buy boats, they see the new ones. They've got boats available up to seventy feet long, and uh, and uh, or they want a new tender for their for their seventy footer. I've got to say, the boat show is starting to scare me now. As my youngest child is starting to graduate college and that tuition bill is going away, I'm like, ah. Don't be scared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on sure. down. Come on in. The water is fine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know your type. I, I see where this is Don't going. be afraid. <laughs> <laughs> um, again, you can do it. I mean, we've talked about stuff we can buy. I mean, actually, you can purchase a boat here. You've got big financing options that are available here. Sure. I know that I've seen them here. Um, you've got LH Financing, I believe it is, that's doing your VIP section. Yep. Um, yeah, now, they have a little different approach. And they, uh, LH Finance has got, um, we'll, pre, we'll pre-qualify people and then we'll invite them to come to the boat show as their guest. So you may want to buy a million dollar boat or you want a $200,000 boat. And they will pre-qualify you, pre-approve you. You come in as their guest, go shop the boats. And, you know, let's face it, in this boat, in this in this boat show, if you want a 40-foot semi-customer production sailboat, family cruiser, right? you don't just go look at one or two of them. You can go look at 12. Sure. Because everybody has their boat here. In the power boat show, if you want a 25-foot center console fishing boat, you can look at 30 of those. And you can see every manufacturer, virtually every manufacturer in finance. So, but what LH Finance does is it pre-qualify you, then they invite you to come in, and you're also then av- able to go into the VIP red carpet lounge, we call it. And uh, there's food served during the day and tastings of uh, various drinks and that kind of thing. And uh, so a nice place to sit and relax. So, you, you know, there, there's some benefits to, to being uh, part of that. But there are several um, several other finance companies that are here that have been with us for many, many years. And insurance companies, you can do the whole boat transaction um, in one show. Right here. Right here. And then all you got to do is show back up on Tuesday and pick it up. Or they'll if, deliver if, it. If, if, if it's towable, if, if, <laughs> yes. it's, if, if it's towable and that's the boat that you want. Right. Um, the other thing that is happening, it always seems, and I say always, but often you'll see high tides or rain. Really? I didn't notice uh, that. No? Well, you got to check it out. It never rains in a boat show. <laughs> <laughs> and this year you're doing something a little bit different. I read it in the Capitol, so it must be true. You are raising the floor. We're uh, trying to rise above the flooding of Annapolis. Yes, we we had a serious problem last year. It's been it's been. I mean, this has been going on forever. This is not brand new, but it's it's getting worse and worse and worse. So as the as the as the sea continues to rise and as the as the shoreline continues to subside, uh, we're getting more and more underwater. So we had a situation last year where um, many of our booth exhibitors were underwater. Literally had had their merchandise ruined in the water. People couldn't walk down certain aspects of it. So we have we've we've corrected that this year. We're flooring over everything, all of our display space along Dock Street, all everything down Newman Alley between our office and, and right and between so, faucets and the fleet between faucets and the fleet <laughs> and uh, all the the entire parking lot will be will be decked over with uh, uh, raised floor or 
floor on the on the surface. It's a brand new surface, and we're still flooring over the top of it. So okay. we just have to we have to bring our boat show up above the water line, and uh, now until the city is able to get that fixed. And that's got to come at a huge expense. Doesn't it's it? huge expense. Well, for us, this is this is a huge yeah. expense for us. We're we're increasing our flooring by about forty percent, which means we're going to spend a hundred thousand dollars flooring underneath our show this year. The long term solution, obviously, is not us paying sure. for flooring. It's it's about it's about backflow preventers and pumping systems and things to keep the water out of the streets. But um, uh, that's that is even a much more grand expense. But in the meantime, the boat show must go on. The boat show has to go on, and we try and make sure that our that our consumers who are coming from around the world have a pleasant experience here and can actually get to all of our exhibitors who spend a lot of money to be here. Have you pissed off the galoshes manufacturers? No. Uh, we've So far, we've been able to uh, keep them happy. We do get a day or two of rain or hours of rain, and that helps out the uh, foul weather gear people, too. So they, <laughs> they like that. Well, uh, another thing that you did last year, which I thought was pretty tremendous uh, in light of the foul weather that we experienced down in the Caribbean last year, the boating community is worldwide. It's not just Annapolis. It's just not Newport or San Diego or Fort Lauderdale or Miami. Right. Uh, it is a worldwide community. And and the Caribbean was devastated by several hurricanes last year. Um, Puerto Rico is just starting to recover, I think, at this point fully, uh, on nearly a year later. And you guys said you needed to do something, and you developed this program called Hands Across the Transom. Mm -hmm. And you were the very first one to step up and say, okay, we're going to seed this thing, and we're going to make a large donation to this, and we're going to send it down to our friends down in the Caribbean to help them rebuild. Your suppliers jumped and you had a party and if you donated seventy five dollars I think or forty five dollars something $45. you got you got yeah. invited to Pusser's for a party and everything else. Your suppliers jumped on and said, Oh yeah, I'm in. Here's right. here's a check for me. Yep. You had um little plastic boxes all around the boat show. Collecting uh, soggy dollars. Soggy dollars because it was probably going to rain and it was raining down <laughs> the Caribbean and whatnot from just people that were walking around. And it was right. a really great show of support for the boating community worldwide. And you raised a quarter million dollars over we two weekends mm -hmm. in October. Um, in Annapolis. And that's a huge number. It, it was a huge number. Actually, it surprised us. Um, we have, this is our industry. This is These are the people who support us, who come to our boat shows. We have something called Vacation Basin in the sailboat show. People are booking 50% and more of their year's business at our boat show for their charter companies. Uh, these charter companies were wiped out in the, in the British Virgin Islands and in the Caribbean. Uh, their boats were destroyed. Uh, so we we looked at that. We said, well, we've got to do something. We've got to help them somehow. And so we ran the idea by some people. And by the way, there were organizations in place to, to uh, collect money and raise funds for these to help these people. All we did is we brought them all together under one umbrella of hands across the transom. So we used all other people's. Well, it made perfect sense. I mean, you know, you were you were the in October, certainly, and right when the, the I want to say the tail end of hurricane season, but they were sort of waning down in the Caribbean. I mean, you were the epicenter of the boating community right. in the United States sure. uh, for two weekends in October. So it made perfect sense yeah. to turn around and bring that together. Yeah, And uh, it, it, it was close enough, uh, like you said, close enough uh, just past those uh, those catastrophic strong events that uh, that it did have uh, gained traction and we did really well so a lot of companies stepped forward we, we put the initial seed money into it and and organized the parties and the, the, the functions and got a lot of really nice volunteers from locally to help out as well so it, it turned out to be a very very good thing you said vacation basin is uh, booking charters in that vacation it's all charter companies from around the world we have a huge uh, med corner Mediterranean uh, tent right right behind me as a matter of fact okay. and uh, they they have have about 12 or 15 charter and destination resort companies that come in and, and there uh, we've got the Caribbean all represented we've, uh, we've so yeah it's mostly about charter destination resorts even uh, uh, owning boats in charter and that sort of thing okay so there are boats in that's all down Eagle Alley and there are boats in here as well as uh, the charter and, and this is for those that aren't aware I mean a, a charter boat I mean you can do it what they call bear 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 boat Bear boat, bear boat, and mm -hmm. you can also do it with um, yeah. crude. Sure. So you can go down and be Bill and Melinda Gates and have somebody sailing the boat and cooking your meals and right. 
and uh, making your beds, yeah. or you or can Bill and Melinda Smith, or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, or, or or you can turn around and do it all, all on your sure. own. So there's uh, it, it is can be an all inclusive type of a vacation, hands off. Or if you're into sailing um, and you want to do that, that's certainly an option that you can do there. Yeah, I, you know, you don't have to own your own boat anymore. There are boating clubs. There are are um, partial ownership kinds of situations, fractional ownership. Uh, there are there are charter companies. There are destination resorts that have boating activities. There, there are all kinds of ways of doing it. And we organized those people into one big group down here in Ego Alley. And uh, they are doing huge business now at this boat show. People come here just to just to book their charters. They can shop anywhere from Croatia to the Virgin Islands to Timbuktu. Wow. And again, again, it's also a fun time to walk around, see what's here. You've got a lot of vendors, a lot of food vendors, a lot of local. Uh, I know the Boy Scouts, I believe, are still. Boy Scouts have, have, uh, have always done uh, some fundraising here. The um, two dozen, I think, uh, nonprofits that are that are doing various activities. So it's hard to remember all, all of them, but uh, we like them all. And, and, and they're welcome down here. I know, and I'm trying to remember which one it is, but somebody sells the ice creams that are uh, usually right down the here. Nutty always... Buddies. What's that? The Nutty Buddies. Yes. Yeah. They sell those over the fence from outside. One of the nonprofit uh, city food vendors out here. <laughs> um, but uh, again, the boat show is supporting uh, the Eastport Elementary, the Annapolis Elementary, the vendors that can come in. Uh, the, the let's say the scouts and the uh, service organizations that can come in and and sell product to raise money for their own organizations outside of the boating community, as well as promoting um, events like the Leukemia Cup and, and many of those kinds of activities that are boating activities inside the show too. Mm-hmm. So we we provide them with space. The Sailboat Show, October 4th through the 8th, and the 4th is the VIP day, or the preview day. Preview day. That's always on a Thursday. It is always on a Thursday, and uh, we run, and, and boat show, the Sailboat Show is always on Columbus Day weekend, so that we always run through Columbus Day Monday with the, with the Sailboat Show, no matter what else happens, and you hear about you know switching to right. next year, the Power Boat Show is first, and that kind of thing. Sailboat Show is always on Columbus Day weekend, so uh, runs Thursday through Monday, uh, with Thursday being the the preview day, it's a, it's a more expensive ticket, so therefore we have fewer people there, and you can get more attention from the right. from the salesmen. And all boats are seventy percent off. All boats are for sale. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, I thought I would try. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, the, the preview day, it's I've been here for that, and that's nice because it's not nearly as crowded. Uh, as you said, you're bringing an awful lot of number of people into town to walk the docks to, to see that. It's, it's a great time to see that. Looking on Thursday the 11th is the preview day as well for the Powerboat oh, Show okay. after the sailboats have moved out and the powers have come in. Right. And that only runs through Sunday, though. Because, right. Um, it's a four-day show. We haven't been able to get a public holiday on We're October 15th on that, yet, yeah. but that's... One year, they actually shut down the government the weekend of the power boat show so the smithsonian was closed and many and so everybody had they were already planning to come here and they all came to annapolis and went to the boat show it was great 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 management not 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 a <laughs> not a bad deal tickets are available at annapolisboatshows.com and you can buy them in advance i do recommend that you do that just that way you it's you well know. the other thing that happens is when you when you buy your tickets online you're automatically registered for the for the grand door prices too which are big charters in the caribbean and, and some other things go along with that so uh, when you buy a ticket online your name goes in for re- registration for the drawing of the of the grand door price that's not a bad deal not not a bad deal. Not a bad deal at all. Buy them online, annapolisboatshows.com. You can get them for the Powerboat Show as well as the Sailboat Show. Um, and I, I love your new, and I, is it a new tagline, but come to the show, leave with a lifestyle. Is that new? That's new this year, yes. But you ought to give somebody a raise for coming up with that one. That one was a, uh, unless it was a team effort and then you owe everybody a pizza. paid for. <laughs> <laughs> I think that it's it's a great thing because, I mean, you turn around, you yeah. do, you come for the show. This is what you get to experience. And uh, boating will get, I, I was a powerboater at one point, and then uh, as my kids grew older, they weren't other interests were there and it didn't sure. make sense i sold it and uh now it, it's time to get back into it again it it, it i'm a, i'm afraid you're not wrong uh-huh. <laughs> i'm terrified that you're I not know. wrong but that's uh that will be here uh getting around is real easy you've got shuttle buses that run you can park at navy marine corps memorial stadium right uh, we recommend that everybody does, does that the elementary school parking lots will fill up and we love that too but but uh don't i wouldn't drive downtown 
park at the at the Navy Marine Corps Stadium, and uh, we we run constant buses from there. We've got 17 buses running all the time, all day long into the evening. And uh, now there is a power boat. There is a home game on the power boat show Saturday. So then we have alternate parking on Riva Road, and the signs will all be up uh, directing people to Riva Road, Board of Education, the high school, and, and uh, okay. So, so they're, okay, but they're all, they're clearly marked along Riva Road. So uh, okay, but anyway, we we recommend that for parking. It's it, it's ten dollars to park all day long and the, and the bus ride's free so it's, it's and, it's and it picks you up it drops you right back down here at the head of Ego Alley right. it'll pick you up on Main Street top of Main Street down Duke of Gloucester Street this is our own buses they pick you up and drop you off right at the gate okay so isn't you, there a stop on Duke of Gloucester for there is first of all on Duke of Gloucester which is at, uh, up at the top of St. Mary Street that's our that's the entrance to our brokerage show and that's that, in the powerboat show right the powerboat show we have the brokerage show in St. Mary's Cove and that that'll Bus, first stop will be there for the buses. And uh, I think last year we had about 55 or 60 power boats that were brokerage used uh, brokerage boats that were available for immediate sale there too. So, and we do bus, we do uh, water taxi rides back and forth between the main show and there. So it's kind of fun to get on a boat and take a little ride. Right. Water taxis will be running during the, uh, during the boat show as water, well. Water taxis always are running. And then, uh, and then we have one, a couple that we have specifically kind for yours. To, to do. And the woodwind is actually also sailing and that you host them within the confines of the boat shows as well we do in the sailboat show there they they run their um, one of their boats right out of our show um so and i always do recommend if anybody is not a sailor or even if even if you are get out on the woodwind they're always a fun sure. they're always a fun sail there but yeah. paul jacobs again thank you for your time your congratulations on your beautiful office here long time coming it's uh, nice to see there's some occupancy here at 110 Compromise Street, and I'm looking forward to seeing Whaler Town move in downstairs, and uh, it'll it'll be great. I'm looking forward to seeing the boat shows with the sailboat show coming in October 4th through the 8th, and the powerboat on the 11th to the 14th. Get your tickets like I will at AnnapolisBoatShows.com. I hope so. Thank you. So we're raising the surface of the walkways, so we're going to raise the city up to compensate for flooding. Yeah, they're going to they're going to they're going to build a platform over all of the paved surfaces that typically flood. And I'll tell you, last year it was a mess. I mean, there was some that was literally up to knee length, uh, knee high in water. And I can't imagine how pissed off the uh, some of the merchants were. Well, the problem is that the, if the, when the water rises, they shut down Compromise Street. So that's, I think, mostly the locals who would come in. They can't get in or they don't come in from that direction. Because I don't think you have many visitors come from that way. Right. He says there's eighty to 100,000 people in two weeks. That's yep. incredible to me. Yep, they essentially double the population for each boat show that they bring in. At, at least double the population of Annapolis. So it gives you an idea of what, how tight the, uh, you know, the impact that it has. And it's, uh, you know, they, they do they do an awful lot for the city. I mean, I'm not saying that we need to, you know, they're the end all and be all of what Annapolis is by any means. But I think that they they're just an integral part of it. I think they're an uh, an iconic part of it, a modern icon for the city. There's a story about this tribe in South America that they have those the army ants that come through, and the army ants migrate like twice a year. And when the army ants come through, they wipe out the or they they eat everything, insects, rodents, everything in in that they find in their path. So when they're on their way, the the people just move out of the village for about a week. When they come back, the village is like vacuumed clean by the ants. They took care of everything. I see that kind of like the boat show. That for two <laughs> weeks, all the residents stay away. We're perfectly fine with it. And when it's all done, we come back down and all the businesses are flush with cash. Yeah. Everyone's and, happy. And, and like Paul and I talked about, was uh, you know the, the cottage industries that have sprung up on that. I mean, you've got the Airbnbs and all the people that, that leave town and rent their homes out to people that are visiting the boat show. The parking spots. The boat show. Uh, the parking spot. And I will throw a plug out to um, the Eastport Elementary yep. School. Uh, great place to park your car. Very convenient. Just a quick walk over the bridge to the boat show. And I think it's 20 bucks. Could be less. Um, but it goes right to the PTA and they just do some wonderful stuff. And that school is a really good school because it's got, it's a very, uh, not a, probably a politically correct term, but it's a very well integrated school. I mean, you've got That's politically correct. all sorts of different classes. You've got some public housing, you've got some regular, you know, middle class, you've got some upper class, you've got, uh, it's a very, Latino, yeah, every, yeah, it's, every, it's good. It's a good cross section of the city. It, it's a good school. Their PTA is just extremely strong. And, um, I do recommend that if they have space in the lot, 
park there and don't give Jess any shit because she'll tell you how to park and how close to get to the next car. And if you don't, I heard she like keys your car unless you're out of your tires. Yeah, so I was, he was saying that he goes, he said it in passing. He said, I don't know exactly how much money that the visitors spend in the city. That would be an interesting study too, to see, because we know the check that they write to us that are to the city at, and they present the big check every year. But it'd be interesting to the merchants to see how important the boat show is to them, if, if it is, because I don't, is there a way to quantify that? I, I mean, certain. Well, you got you got the hotels, you got the restaurants. It'd be, it'd be difficult because you'd have to look at that those weekends in prior years, and it's been here for forty nine years. Right. Um, yeah. So you don't have any baseline. It, it it'd be very difficult to. I've heard anecdotally that the merchants below Conduit Street do very well. Right. And the merchants above don't. And it's sort of like that whole church circle sometimes for Main Street. You know, you, that's why they don't go to Maryland Avenue or West Annapolis. They get up to the church and turn around and come back down. And but, last week we were talking to Alex and, and Mayor Buckley about this. We were talking about some of the – we were talking about the Santa Speedo run and how some of the merchants don't like it because they feel that they don't benefit from it uh, or may keep business away. And we, we were just – our point was that I think the merchants and the downtown residents have to realize that some events will benefit – certain portions of Main Street or downtown. Sure. And it's not going to be a blanket sort of solution for everybody. So Midnight Madness is basically the people between Zachary's and, and Church Circle, they benefit. Whereas, you know, the boat show, you know, the Market Square and the rest of the restaurants down there, they benefit. Right. And and Dining Under the Stars benefits West Street. You know, so it, you kind of spread it all it is, out. It's, it's a give and take. It's a give and take and they need to do that. But I mean, the boat show does not does an awful lot. Um you know, an awful lot for us. And I think that's, uh, I'm excited to go see it again and um, see what's new and dream a little bit. And you come for the show and leave with a lifestyle. Actually, it's pretty good. I was I wanted to make fun of it. That, that's actually pretty good. Yeah, I was looking to make fun of it too, but then I, yeah, I, realized, like, I, I was like, no, you know, that's pretty good. Give yeah. them a raise, whoever, whoever yeah. did that for you there. Um, I feel, picture people like just kind of coming in wearing like these stupid t-shirts and leaving wearing Sperry's and Helly Hansen. And that's, that, that's true. You know, the cheap, uh, smoking a the pipe. cheap sale voters and the, and the generous mm. power voters as mm. far as tipping goes. What's the, what's the take on that? The power voters? Then... Tip better. Yeah. They're, they're, uh, like judge smells. <laughs> Uh, or no, no, not like Judge Smales. He's a sailboat. He's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's, uh, they're like, uh, what was Rodney Dangerfield's character? I don't know. What was his character? I forget. Al Cervic. Oh, that's right. Cernic? Cervic? Cervic. It's one of those two. Yeah. Uh, hey, free champagne for everybody. <laughs> Does hat come with a free bowl of soup? <laughs> Looks good on you, though. <laughs> yeah, so get down to the boat shows. Good times, a lot of fun. Go dream. And um, make sure you tune in to us next week because what are we doing next week? Commons. Huh? We're talking about the commons. The commons. That's right. That's right. We're talking to. That's where we are. We're at the commons right now. We do record at the commons. It's every, right across from the Lighthouse Bistro. Mm -hmm. You pass it all the time. Bistro or bistro? Bistro. I've said that word more in the last month and a half because the mayor put on those bistro bistro tables on Main Street. Oh yeah. Um, but yeah, right across from the Lighthouse Bistro Bistro on West Street Two Hundred Nine. If you need a place to work out up for a day or maybe a month or need a semi-private office, it's a good place to come. It's very uh, Pacific Northwest in here. It's got like the exposed ceiling, the high ceilings and the Edison light bulbs and the wooden high tables. And it's just... It is. Well, well I'll make sure you take pictures after we uh, put it all together so people can see what the inside of it looks like. But um, but we're going to talk about some different people that are here, why they're here and everything else. And um, basically... Sesame Street. These are the people in your neighborhood, huh? Yeah. Basically, we're going to give them a... An hour long plug because they're just really great and we've got this great place to record. Yeah, they're gonna stay here. So. We don't want to be kicked out. Nice people there. Beyond that, what do you got on the plan, Tim? Well, uh, I've okay, good. I actually I do have some stuff coming up. So we're gonna be talking about uh, a friend of mine who is an engineer who is very into theoretical engineering. So whereas I love Alexa and I have like an Alexa in every room in my house. And I control everything, and I love it because I don't have to do any physical labor, such as moving light switches up and down. And he says that I am an incredible fool for doing that, and he's going to explain why. Oh. On all that stuff. That's interesting. Okay. Um, you're not going to come away from this feeling any better. It's not a feel-good piece. You're, you're going to be come off it paranoid and, and throwing away all your it's technology. It's sort of like the HPV piece. Yeah, yeah. You're not going to be happy with all your technology after this one. Well, that'd be interesting. But um, beyond that, no. If anybody that's listening has any suggestions, um, we probably ought to revisit like the... The thing with Lee Hurt and Kara McKenna. Right. And, and Satchel. The, Satchel's our guy out in Prince George's County. Satchel, it's just we're totally disorganized. That's why. And by we, I mean me. Uh -huh. Any suggestions? Send them in if you've got ideas for guests. 
if you've got ideas for topics or whatever, we'd love to do it. If you think you'd be a good guest, come on in. You know, let us know. And find us at the info at the MarylandCrabs.com or you can go to Facebook where we have a group and we have a page. And I'm so off Facebook now. I'm so sick of it. But not of this. You're not going to be sick of our page or our group. You're going to love that. <laughs> and then Twitter, which I have quit, at MD Crabs Podcast. Very good. Yeah, well, I've forgotten because I'm off Twitter because I'm better than that now. And I'll tell you what I did is we had a, uh, a call-in line or a tip line or anything like that. And I used it when I did an article on the bike lane. I asked people to call in. I worked out really well. But you can call or text us. We're not going to answer the phone, but you can send a text or a call to 443-266-3600. And I still want to do that ghost story one that we talked about. Mm -hmm. we're, this is actually not scripted. We're talking about this. like We're working this out live in front of you people. Right. But I want to do where people call in with their ghost story. I want to do a Halloween episode where you tell us the, your ghost story in town, like five-minute story. And I want to just string them all together. That might be fun. Yeah. Maybe that'll stop Scott McMullen from bitching that there's no haunted house in the county. Yeah, he does complain about that. But this is the real deal. This is like the real, like if you've had an experience. Someone told me a story about uh, Peter Shields, which is a hotel up in Cape May, New Jersey, and it's a local business owner where they left in the middle of the night. Which he, hotel? He and his wife. Peter, Peter Shields. That's the name of it. The what? Peter Shields. Okay. But they, they got up in the middle of the night, and he's, he's a prominent business owner locally, and he and his wife told me the story together, and they said they woke up in the middle of the night, and they saw a, a, a little boy standing in the middle of the room, like standing where the table is, cut in half by the table. I mean, not cut in half, but like... He was standing where the table was and the table was going through him. Ooh. They packed up their stuff and they left in the middle of the night. Okay, I like And that. I don't believe in any of that stuff. I don't. I but. like your idea, Tim. Okay, I'll tell you what. If you've got a ghost story, if you can tell it, give us a call. 443-266-3600. And we will stitch them all together and do a Halloween episode. Yep, that's what we're going to do. You can write it out and read it if you want. Right. And you don't have to be great or you can just sort of recant it. Uh, then when you call the voicemail, it's just sort of a machine that answers. So it's nothing really personal or anything like that. But just when it says beep, just start talking. Yes, they know how a voicemail works. Yeah. That's about it. Tune in next week, Thursday at noon. Same bat time, same bat channel. We'll talk comments. This has been the Maryland Crabs podcast with Tim Hamilton and John Fernay. Sure to follow them in all the regular places, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and online at themarylandcrabs.com. Take a moment to rate us on iTunes. Now, get the hell out of my kitchen. Seriously, go! You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.